Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And in this video, you'll be learning how to create a rating view in SwiftUI that is capable of displaying partial ratings like 3.5, 4.5. So we will use half stars to also display the rating instead of only full stars. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So this is a normal SwiftUI application. We haven't really written any line of code. The first thing we need to do is to create a rating view. And you can create it in a separate file. That's perfectly fine. But uh, so that I can easily share it. So I'm just going to go ahead and create it in the same file itself. Now it's a view. So this means that you will need to implement the body also. So let me go ahead and say rating view. And that's it. Now the rating view should be capable of changing the rating and giving the updated rating to the caller. So in this case, the content view will be the actual caller so that the rating view can be used in other different views. Let me go ahead and add over here rating view. And from the content view, we can create a state that is going to represent the actual rating. So I'm going to say state property, which will be rating. And the rating can be double. So we're going to go ahead and start with double. And you can assign it any value that you want. But initially, we don't really have a rating. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that this is a nullable. And then we can pass this rating as a binding to the rating view. And the reason that we're passing the rating, which is a binding, to the rating view is so that the rating view can change it. And whenever the rating view changes the rating, the content view gets evaluated and we can show the rating or do whatever we want with the rating. Now, since we want to pass the binding itself in the rating view, I'm going to go ahead and create the binding. And that will be a rating. And we'll use a double. Okay. So this is how you will be passing the actual, you know, the rating from it. So now I can go ahead and say rating and to pass the binding, I will use a dollar sign and the rating. So this means this is now passed as a binding. So this means that whenever in the rating view, we're going to change the rating, we're going to assign a new rating, the content view, since it is passing the rating as a binding also gets re-evaluated and display the rating somewhere in the content view or any other view that is using the rating view. Okay. Now comes down to how do we display the rating. So when you're displaying the rating, the first thing you should always try to do is to start in small steps. How can we just display stars? That's it. So I'm going to go over here and say edge stack. And for each, and we're just, we're just going to make sure that our rating is still five, like one star to five star. But you can configure this part, right? You can go ahead and pass another argument in the rating view so that you can have the, the maximum number of stars. That's perfectly fine. Well, we're just going to start with five right now. And maybe even later we can change that. But right now, just stick with five stars. And we have for each index in. And now we can go ahead and display an image that is going to represent a particular star. So I'm just going to say, go ahead and say star. And now you can see that we have our star being displayed. So that's pretty cool. Didn't really took that much of a time. We are easily able to create this and we have the stars. All right. Now, the next thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and even make sure that the color is different. So we'll say it is yellow. Okay, kind of hard to see right now, but I guess that's fine. I mean, you can use a different color for the rating or for the star. We can also go ahead and set the font to be like a large title so it can become larger. There we go, much better. Okay, now, right now we're using star, but if you say star.fill, that's the one that is selected. So just remember that we will be using star, star.fill. And then there is also another one, which is uh, called star dot 
leading half dot fill. So kind of like a long name, but let me just show it to you right, right over there. You can see that these are the images of half star, you know, so one half of the star is filled. So that is going to allow us to do rating in format that is like half a star, like 2.5 or 3.5 and so on. But let's not jump into that detail right now. Let's go back to the star, which is empty star. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are displaying the correct star uh, based on the selected value. So if I go and add on tab gesture on there, right? And on tab gesture is added on the image itself. So there are a couple of different things we, that we need. We need to find out if you click in this area, like a half. So if you click on this area, like the half area, like the one that is, I'm gonna color it out like this part. If you click on this area, then it means that you are trying to do half a star. But if you click on kind of like this area, the other half, this part, then we will say that, okay, you're trying to get the full star, all right? So all of that handle tab, we are going to make sure that we are going to implement a different function. But inside the on tab gesture, we also want to find out that where are you tapping? So one of the overloads of the on tab gesture is that you can pass in the coordinate space. It takes an argument over here for the count. We're gonna remove the count. And the coordinate space, we're just gonna pass in local. Local means of the current view, which itself is the image. And then we, it will give us some sort of a location for that point. And we can go ahead and get that location and simply print it out. All right. So this means that whenever we tap on the image, which is a star, from the coordinate space, which is local, local to the image itself, we will get the location where you tapped, and we're gonna just print out the X, meaning the X coordinate of the star. Now, if I open up this and try to look at the previews, let's go ahead and touch or tap on this button. Okay, so it's telling us 13.33, if I go a little bit on the left, you can see it's getting closer to like zero, okay? And if I go on the right, it's going to like 30 or 40. So it's giving us all of these different locations, right? But we only are interested in the actual star, meaning we're only interested in when you're tapping on the actual star over here, okay? So, what will be the width of this? I mean, this can be 35, I mean, 38. You can see it's kind of like, if we zoom in, we can try to find out, you can see right there, 38, 30 or 40. 40 can be a good number. You can use 40 if you want to, that's fine. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so inside over here, we are going to call a function called handle tap and we're gonna pass in at, and now we need to pass in the location, or sorry, the index of which item that you're tapping. Because you can see the index is making sure that you have five different starts, and we need to pass in handle tab, we need to pass in the index. But it would be a good idea to pass the index as a double, as you will see later on, we do have to perform some calculations. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and introduce a variable called double index and simply convert that. There we go. Now you can simply pass this to the handle tab and that is also perfectly fine. So I can go ahead and say double index or I can just perform the double calculation over here. That's the same thing. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in the location, which will be whatever we're getting. So in this case, we're just gonna pass in the location itself. Now, currently we don't have any function call handle tap, and that's why it's complaining. Let's go ahead and create the function. We'll say handle tap and at index, which will be double, and then the second argument is location, which will be of type CG point. 
So the whole point of this handle tab is to find out if you have tapped on the left side or the right side. So we're going to say is tabbed on left side equals to if the location dot x is less than, let's say that if the width of this star is 40, so if it's less than for less than 20 or equal to 20, it's, it depends if you want less than 20 or just 20. I mean, that's kind of like up to you. So we'll get that, okay? If location.x is less than 20, you can move this 20 into a different variable if you want to. Let's say image size, that is perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna go and say image size, which will be double equals to, and we'll say 40 over here. And now we can go back and say image size over here. Okay, so once we get the tapped over here on this part, we will set the rating to be if it is tapped on the left side, that means we, whatever the index is, just subtract 0 0.5 from it. So 0 0.5. So this means that if you tap on number three over here, but you tapped on the left side, this side, then this means that you don't really need three. So it should be three minus 0 0.5. So it will be 2.5. So that's what we're trying to do. Else, just whatever the index is, that is perfectly fine. And we're gonna be assigning to the rating. And let's go ahead and print out the rating so you'll have a little bit more idea of what we're doing over here. It's not really going to color or fill our all of these things yet but it will at least give us some idea of what the rating is. So right now, okay, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So already we can see that it's not working as expected. I mean, this is 0 0.5. This should be different, right? I mean, this is, if I'm clicking over here is 0 0.5. If I'm clicking over here, that should be one, but it's not really giving us one. It's giving us, let's say, 0 0.5. So if I click over here, that's 1.5, but it's never really giving us two. So we have to find out, oh, that's because we said image. It should be image divided by two, right? So that's another thing. Keep that in mind. We're looking for the half image, not the full image. So this is 0 0.5. This is one. This is 1.5. This is two. 2.5. This is 3, 4, uh, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5. So looks like it's working correctly now. The only thing that we need to do, which is remaining, is the actual display part of it, okay? So this means that this part needs to change. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a proper a function, a private function, and we will call it star star type where you can pass in the index, which is integer. And this is going to give you the correct image. Now, before we get the correct image, the first thing we're gonna do is get the actual rating. Now, keeping in mind that the rating is double, so we're gonna do that. And there are many different ways of finding the, you know, the remainder. I think you can use many different functions to find the remainder. There are some built-in functions. I'm just gonna use a different technique, uh, rounded. So I'm just gonna say rounded rating. And I'm just gonna select the ceiling value of it. So if the rating is 3.5, so I'm just gonna say like four or something. Okay, so whatever the ceiling value is, we're just gonna select that. And now I can say if the index is less than equal to rounded rating, so this, part that we are writing, this is to create uh, the complete star, the whole star. And then we can check if the index is less than equal to the rating itself. So we're going to just convert the whole number or compare the whole number. Then we are going to return you star.fill, meaning that's the whole star. Else, we will return star and then the half one. So it should be leading uh, half dot fill. Else, if this condition is not true at all, 
then we can go ahead and simply return the actual star. So this is the important part. Over here, we're getting the rating, right? Now, if the rating is, let's say, 3.5, so this means that we need three stars that are full, meaning three stars that are fully covered, like this. And one of the stars, so these are fully covered, one is only half covered, like this. So that's what we are looking for right now. So these are all covered fully. And one of them is like this one is half covered because it's 3.5. And that's what we're doing over here. We get the rounded one. So whenever the rating that you pass in, we get that. And the actual, if it, that value is less than index, then we get the in index. And also the index is less than equal to the actual uh, rating because we need to make sure it's not going above then we return the star dot fill now we need to call this particular star type function which we can simply do it over here star type and passing in the index itself let's go ahead and check it out okay here we go it's actually working pretty good you can see that i can do half star and I can do full star and it's uh, working nice. So this is three and a half, four, four and a half and five. Now, another thing that we want to do, basically the final thing that we want to do is in our content view, it would be nice if we can display that value like 3.5, four and so on. So that would be a nice way to finish this. So one of the techniques that we can use over here is we can say, I mean, there are many different ways. Text rating.map. So rating.map over here means that we're going to go ahead and unwrap. And this code that in the map that we're going to write, it's only going to get executed uh, when the rating is unwrapped. And inside over here, we can simply go ahead and display the actual rating. So I can go ahead and use the string function to only show one part of the rating, all right? And let me go ahead and just copy it. Because a bit of code that we have to type, I mean, this is just one of the ways. It's not the only way to do this. And foreground color, let's just go with black or something, there we go. And there we go, 1.5. 3, 3.5, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so on. And this is saying that the line limit for the text is one, so it should only be one line. And reserve space means that even though the text is not really being displayed when the page actually loads, meaning the space is still reserved, like there is reservation for the text to be displayed, so that the nobody else can take that space. And there you have it. So there you have it. We have created a partial rating control, partial rating view in Swift UI. Make sure to download the code and hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you do enjoy it, then make sure that you share it with other people and also uh, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see that I have a lot of different courses which cover various aspects of iOS development. This includes augmented reality. I also have a very 26.5 hour course on Swift UI, so make sure you check that out. MVVM design pattern, MV design pattern, cookbook, and a lot more courses. I even recently published a course on reactive programming using Combine. So definitely check that course out. And for courses, you can always go ahead and check out the YouTube description for all my new courses. Right here, reactive programming using iOS. And check out the link in the YouTube description. Thank you so much.